All right, so 12th Gen is launched, you guys already know that. And I have seen a whole lot of discussion taking place online about Intel using twice as much power as Ryzen. And it's clear that many people just have a very wrong understanding of what TDP versus actual power consumption is. So today we are going to compare the two. We've got a 12900K set up here, hooked up to our watt meter. This is in test bench format. And we have our Ryzen 5900X sitting right here because it's the same number of threads. Um, I would do a 5950X, but this is actually gonna be a better test for Ryzen because there's less cores, which will make it use even less power. But again, these are very comparable in terms of price. So we're gonna do some tests today. We're gonna check some um, performance load wattage draw. We'll talk about the setups, how we're comparing them, some caveats and, and all that sort of stuff. So let's just get right into it. NZXT's build is a quick and easy way to get a new gaming computer, and right now they're proud to announce expansion and availability to Australia, the Netherlands, France, and Italy. Build a gaming PC on your budget using the built-in configurator and see exactly how your favorite games will perform. Want to build your own PC but still have the NZXT peace of mind warranty? Then the new BLD Build It Yourself kit has what you want. Buy it and build it yourself and NZXT has you covered. To get started configuring or building your next gaming PC, visit the build link in the description below. So the 12900K here is a 16 core CPU, but 24 threads. We have eight P cores with hyperthreading, eight E cores without hyperthreading. So I have to keep saying that because a lot of people are, are just completely forgetting the fact that these are this is a hybrid CPU. Over here is my 5900X. This is uh, obviously in a full build. We've got a lot of things to talk about here for a moment, but there it is out right there, 5900X. I've got to show all this stuff on screen because you'd be surprised how many tinfoil hat wearers are out there thinking like, oh, he's skewing it because he's being paid. Now, trust me, if I were being paid, I wouldn't have a light shining over on extension cords because I can't afford to get all the wiring done in here. But anyway, I digress. Both of these are also in balanced power mode. Both of these are Windows 11. There's balanced, see, balanced mode. So they no longer have the Ryzen balance mode and all that because Windows scheduler and all that does actually handle uh, Ryzen fine now. Also too, the latest updates for Windows 11 seem to have alleviated any of the reduced performance that people were seeing with Ryzen. So this is about as apples to apples as we can get. Yes, clearly this system right here has less hooked up to it. This has 10 fans with RGBs, it has four sticks of RAM, it has a water block. It has a, obviously a water block on the 3090. Both of these are 3090s, both of these are 4K systems. This has two sticks of RAM, DDR5, which is lower voltage, 1.25, versus a 1.35 volts uh, stick over here. Well, 1.35 volts per stick times four. So we know this system over here is using more wattage that is being represented right here in the idle. You can see the AMD system is idling at 152 watts. The, the Intel system is under 100. The differentiation right there is obviously the fact that this system has much more going on with it, which is keeping the idle watts high. So we'll just address that right away because obviously we are not comparing idle here. We are comparing the load temperatures or yeah, temperatures as well because temperatures do affect the wattage draw as well as the amount of watts being drawn at load. So the other thing worth mentioning here too is the way the calculations work is we are taking the load wattage of the system. So this is the load wattage of Intel or the idle wattage. So we'll be seeing what the wattage is under load, subtracting the idle wattage. That way we can then see exactly what our under load increase is, which is what the CPU is drawing. So I need to go ahead and I need to go start taking some notes here of what our idle is in terms of power draw. Well, I don't know. It seems to be sitting right around 96, 97. So fine, we'll call it 97 watts. And then for Ryzen, yeah, we'll call it 145 because every time I looked at it, that's what I saw. So we don't care about that number right now. These two are not comparable because this would need to have 10 fans of the exact same fan ticked up and all that. What I want to do first though, before we start this, is I do want to go ahead and shut down the Ryzen system. And I want to take two sticks of RAM out. I'm curious as to how much idle we're going to see it come down with only two sticks of RAM. Because then we'll be as apples to apples as we can, two sticks of RAM on each. The fact that that will only have 16 gigs of RAM now and this one will have 64 won't matter. I mean, there's more chips in this, therefore one might be able to say that these actually draw more power even though it's 1.25 volts because there's more chips. That's, I mean, it could be, may not be. I don't think that's the way it's gonna work. So it's almost 10 watts difference between those two sticks. Um, and remember, that's without there being any sort of load right now. So as you can see now, we've got this as Comparable as we can. So we're gonna be using Cinebench R23 because it loads the CPUs the most. Not only is it a, a, a wattage check, it's also a performance check here. Three, two, one, go.
All right, so three, well, 371, 375. 371, okay. 263, I mean, Ryzen's looking pretty good here. 264. That's very constant, 371 though. Look at the speed difference though between the two. Wow. I guess seeing it side by side really, really shows. So we can already tell right now by that, by that one test, higher idle, lower load by 100 watts, uh, 110 watts or so. Okay, so here we go. Our first test right here, okay, 97 watts minus 371 gives us a 274 watts on that CPU. That's a lot. Okay, so AMD had a 135 watt idle minus 264, 129 watts. 129. So if you take 129 times two, that's less than 274. So, so far it's looking like CPU for CPU, this is using roughly double the performance. So, I mean, more power draw, more performance. At least you're getting more for that. If they were this, and no, I'm not spinning it to make Intel look good. I mean, it, Intel looks great. It's just, it's using a lot of power to do it, obviously. Let's do that one more time, because I just wanna, I just wanna sanity check here. So it's still sitting at 137, 136. This is still sitting at 98 to 97. There's 100 there for a second, 97. 372, holy crap. And remember, I had, th I had 371 written down for our first test, so 372, it's consistent. 264, 264. 265, 263, so yeah, exactly the same. There is, I did actually remove the Intel limits on this. I don't think that's gonna affect our score, but I should now run a test with the Intel limits re-enabled because I've run these tests already with everything enabled and the scores are at 27,670, 20,139. So they're still perfectly in line. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and Restart this system, and I'm going to re-enable the Intel limits. I don't believe I have any overclock supplied on the 5900X. I don't overclock Ryzen because I find that it's just, it, it, it hurts your performance more often than not unless you do a per core, per CCX overclock, and I don't waste my time on that. Actually, the core performance boost is enabled on Ryzen, which could actually <laughs> make it use more power than normal. Oh man, it's so hard to not like, just still be impressed with AMD's power uh, efficiency. That's just awesome right there. There's no overclock supplied. I just have a uh, DDR or DOCP at 3200, right? And then we have core performance boost enabled, core ratios on auto. So we're not changing any of the core ratios per CC, all, all auto. So you can see there's no overclock applied. Over here, we did remove the Intel limits. So if I go ahead and go back to disabled enforce all limits, by default, let BIOS optimize is what ASUS has set, but I'm gonna enforce all limits. You can see everything else is still auto. Heck, I didn't even have XMP enabled. So let's go ahead and enable XMP because it is over there. I don't think it's gonna change anything. It might make the RAM use a little bit more wattage. But I can tell you right now, those scores are perfectly in line with what our review scores were without XMP. So that shows, again, Cinebench is not a RAM intensive task at all. This is another problem with 12th gen, 12th gen, specifically on this motherboard in DDR5, is if you make a DDR5 change, it goes through like five restarts to train the memory and then it will come online. So as you can see, the AMD system's like, come on, bro, let's go. Well, Intel's like, I got this, hold on. We're training the memory. There's a lot of it, give me a second. Okay, so it went from 371 to 367. <laughs> so that's not. That's not anything different. Yeah, that's a little bit less wattage than Cinebench. You can see how Cinebench, I mean, it's not a lot. It's almost 20 watts less. Okay, well, another test with very consistent results versus our Cinebench showing that the Intel CPU is using a significant amount of power, more power than Ryzen's. And like I said, even if we were to put the 5950X on here, we might see that hit. 285, 295 watts. Because what's funny is the 5900X and the 5950X are still the same TDP chip. Yeah, even if we made up the difference of a 5950X, it's not gonna come anywhere near this wattage. So the total system power right now, while running the transcode, which it's it's so far ahead too, by the way. We've got time remaining two minutes, time remaining over here, three minutes, 27 seconds. It's almost twice as fast. Four minutes, five seconds on the Intel. 
We're at 410 now on this one, and we still have about a minute 22 left. So you can see the performance difference. There, I mean, I don't think anyone's arguing that the 12900K with its P cores and E cores is fast. But if we look at the Intel Arc too, it's funny because this isn't on here, this isn't on other CPUs. So it shows processor base power, 125 watts. If we hit the exclamation point, it says the time average power dissipation that the processor is validated to not exceed during manufacturing while executing an Intel specific high complexity workload at base frequency and the junction temperature as specified in the data sheet for the SKU segment and configuration. What that basically says is if we translate that is it won't use more power than this in a very de specific determined Intel task that they have set which is obviously gonna be the most efficient task that they can set because this is kind of like the MPG rating on cars. They always have a little asterisk at highway speed at 60 miles an hour, tailgating a truck, you know, something like that. At base clocks. At base clocks. So if we go ahead and look over the maximum turbo power, it says 241 watts. And if we look at our math right here, we were getting 274 watts. So we actually exceeded that even at the stock settings, which is interesting to me. Um, if we hit the little exclamation on that, maximum turbo power. The maximum sustained less than one second power dissipation of the processor as limited by current and or temperature controls. So there you go. We now know thermal velocity boost is obviously a part of this factor. Instantaneous power may exceed maximum turbo power for short durations of less than 10 milliseconds. So basically this is a spike request. It can exceed that is what they're saying. Only we're seeing it exceed that consistently. Um, no, maximum turbo power is configurable by system vendor and can be system specific. Okay, so something on the ASUS board might be allowing that to exceed that power, which is what they just basically did. They're like, here's where we built it. The manufacturer, AKA motherboard might somehow exceed that. If we had left this on the let BIOS optimize on the auto settings, it would probably exceed that for sure because ASUS automatically wants to give you the most performance. If the cooling is there and the voltage is there, it will automatically let the limits exceed itself. So it's like its own thermal velocity boost built into the CPU. So Intel's not hiding the fact that they're very power hungry. I don't think that's exactly an advertising point right there. That's like saying the V6 Honda Accord. It's only half the MPG of the Civic, but it's still good. You know, so it's, it's like you wouldn't say that, right? It's not gonna make its way into your marketing materials. Anyway, moving forward, I just wanted to run one time spy test to see these are both 3090s. That's a water-cooled Strix card. This is an air-cooled EVGA card. They should, they're stock right now. It should still go up to around the same wattage draw. This is not a perfect apples to apples test. I'm just curious right now, in regular time spy, how the FPS is gonna look in the two, and then I wanna compare the overall scores because they're gonna, Time Spy takes into account a CPU test. So I'm gonna start this in three, two, one, click. So far they look like pretty much the same. This one's using, look at this, they're almost identical. You're not gonna notice this level of power draw that we're showing with the CPU stuff, unless you're someone that is buying this CPU and putting it in a system that's intended to do heavy compute tasks all the time, specifically on the CPU, um, then you would see Obviously over time, uh, more energy cost, more heat load. All right, comes a CPU test. This is gonna hit CPU now because it's doing physics. 267, 329, 315. So it's lower than it was. It's not as high as Cinebench. And here's the thing that we're kind of starting to figure out. Did it finish the CPU test before that one could even start? But look at the CPU test on that one. 258 watts, 264. This is gonna be a lower CPU score for damn sure. Um, GPU should be roughly the same. Look at the difference in CPU score, 19,783, 11,620, which gives us that massive difference in our, in our scores for combined right there. Um, graphic score was higher on the water-cooled card because it was able to hold the boost clocks higher because the temp was much lower. Look at the two systems right now in this particular instance at idle. And where Intel really does shine is the E-Core stuff. Under full load, when the P cores are being fully loaded with hyperthreading and the E cores, it's clearly using more power than Ryzen's core design on its, uh, what is it, seven nanometer now, right? So by seeing core for core comparison in terms of the P core versus the Ryzen, these clearly use more. But what you're seeing right now in desktop use and just general usage, like if we just come over here and I open up, say, I don't know, File Explorer and I look at some downloads and do stuff, it's not even hitting 100 watts. Where if we come over here now and start using the Ryzen system, like I'm moving the mouse and I'm opening up files and stuff, we're hitting almost 200 watts. Ryzen has a higher baseline, but a lower load situation because the Ryzen core design on 7 nanometer with its SMT is more efficient under load than the P core is with its hyperthreading going, and the E-core is loaded at the same time, this is where you have to ask yourself, what is your use case scenario? Are you going to be using the CPU for very heavy CPU intensive tasks? 
If you are and you want the extra performance, you're not gonna care so much about the power draw. But if you're very power conscious, you might make your decision to go with a Ryzen CPU because they are clearly more efficient under a full load scenario. That's not most people's use case. Most people are not fully loading their CPU. We just showed you in a gaming type scenario where depending on the title and the world threads and what's happening in the game engine, uh, the Intel and the AMD are very comparable. If you're the kind of person that leaves your system on all the time and you're worried about the uh, amount of kilowatts, uh, you know, cents per kilowatt hour that you're racking up with your system, Intel over time is gonna be cheaper if you're not loading it up any more than you would be, say, in an, in an AMD system. So those are our tests, that's our result. Um, it should be no surprise, Intel has a lower idle state uh, power draw because it's probably only using E cores right now, but it's got a higher performance power draw when all the cores are loaded versus Ryzen. So Ryzen has a narrower bracket and Intel has like a bigger bracket. Sound off down in the comments below. Is the wattage differences you saw enough to make you not go with the extra performance if you're shopping in this particular tier of CPU? Are you just an AMD fanboy that's like, I don't care, I'm buying AMD because I'm a rebel? Or are you like me where you go, I follow the performance and I'm gonna go with what's faster? 5950X would be a better CPU, I think, obviously than the 5900X, but it's also more expensive about $200 more expensive than the Intel CPU. So there you go, guys. Sign off down in the comments below. Power draw per power draw. Very different use cases. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next one.